So another fun project. Um, trying to think of some other uh, like Christmas gifts or stuff to do um, for uh, one of our family members. I actually found him at my uncle's house and he had a picture of this clock. Or not a picture, he had the clock. And uh, the clock was made out of a out of a, like a cookie end of a log with these empty lures around. And I'm like, oh, this is cool. My, I know somebody in my family is a huge fisherman. And I'm like, oh, I gotta do some of that. It'd be really neat, you know? So kind of like kicking it around a little bit, trying to figure out what we did. And uh, we came up with this. So I've actually already finished the project, but I'll kind of walk you through a little bit how we did it. Um, turned out really nice. I'm definitely gonna do it again. I kind of want one for myself, actually. So uh, the first thing we did, we had to make the clock face. So. We had to go out and find some wood. You know, uh, my father actually has, he, he does a lot of his own wood burning, so he has a bunch of logs laying around. So we found a log with some character and stuff, and we wanted a pretty good size clock and stuff like that. So we found a log, and then we cut um, some cookies off it, like one inch, two inch thick cookies, off the log. And so this is what we ended up cutting off the log, and we cut about seven or eight of them off there. But we needed something for a clock face, you know? So we cut something like this off, worked out pretty well. Um, after that though, you, you know, you need some tools and stuff to get the sand out. I got adorable sand and stuff like that. Um, uh, it takes a while with that. Um, probably I'll go pick up a belt sander after this. Because <laughs> uh, it took about four hours because you want to, you know, get all the chainsaw grooves out and stuff. And I don't have a planer. If you had a planer or something, that would be really nice for this. But we didn't. So we just did this uh, old fashioned way of the sander. Um, and I just had the Oracle sander and I, I sanded it down. Got this face really nice and smooth. Um, and it worked out the edges a little bit and then on the back side um, because we need to put a clock in here you know so you need some hardware on the back um, and you get the hardware anywhere like Amazon anything I actually went to Hobby Lab I'm sure Menards I mean everywhere kind of has little basic clock kits that um, that you for assembling your own clocks uh, on the back and then this is most of my practice piece actually on the back I was practicing with my router and what I was, I was carving down into this piece so I could recess the clock face, or the clock guts on this side, and drill a tiny hole so that the clock handles are on the other side. And then we're like, well, we need some lures. So we started looking around, and you know, we weren't finding much for antique lures, um, but uh, we just ended up getting a bunch of like uh, rapplas and, and jigs and stuff like that. A bunch of lures he uses a lot uh, to make the clock, and then we use those as the numbers going around. So after we did all that, you know, put the, um, router in the back, you know, for the guts and stuff, drilled a little hole to center it all up, sand the face down really good. I ended up putting some natural tone on there. I really like natural tone. If you watch a lot of my videos, I use natural tone most of anything. I, um, I love the natural wood look. You know, uh, there's not a lot of things. Uh, if you watch the back on some of my things, uh, I have uh, add like some oak stains and stuff. And depending on the projects, you know, what I'm looking for, um, but most of the time, I go, I go right to the natural grain, or the natural tone um, stains and stuff. And, and all it does is it just, it just kind of livens up and, and brings out the grains without darkening things and covering things up and changing the color of the natural wood. There are some woods that, you know, don't want, depending on what you want to do, you want to change the color. But most of the time, it's just nice to, to keep the, the natural, especially when you're using hickories or mahoganies or stuff like that. Something that has tons of character, more than just pine and stuff like that. Um, the wood itself has so much character that I just use the natural tone. So that's what we did in this, natural tone. And then we used, I uh, actually put four layers of polyurethane on this, on the face of it. The wood was, um, I let it dry for about two, three weeks before we really started working on this project. Also it was in the garage, which I have heated garage, um, brought inside. You want to dry slow. And you do want to find a log or a log piece that, that hopefully has been seasoned for like a year. Uh, the biggest thing is you got to get the moisture out. Um, if you cut pieces like this, like right off the tree, you cut down a tree and start cutting pieces like this, most of them are going to crack uh, because they're so full of water still. And then there's not a lot of support when you're in a little piece like this that they'll just start splitting and cracking and the, the wood will start pulling away. So if you can find a log that's been you know down for a year, um, that's good. Something that's seasoned for a while, you know, in the full log, so it has all the structure to keep it together. Then the moisture gets out, and the, you know, spaces form, and it doesn't form cracks. Um, that's the best. Um, this one wasn't quite a year, so I was a little worried about that. So I tried to dry it really slow. So I kept it in my garage. That's not like heated like the house. 
and um, to dry it as slow as I can um, so that I, I didn't get any cracks. And it worked, so I, I didn't get any cracks, so that's good. Uh, so that was the rough thing. We kind of talked about what we did. Here's the final product. It turned out really nice. I was really happy with it. So on the back, like I said, we routed out and we put all the guts in there. We put a little hole. You can see all the hands and stuff around the front. And then on around the edges, we put the lures. So we got rapalas and jigs and we got a bobber up on top. It was just kind of really nice best of looking thing, especially for a hunter fisherman kind of guy. You can see those grains really came out that natural tone I and mean, this is a beautiful piece. Um, I really like it. I like it so much I might have to try to find a similar piece and make one myself. Uh, but it turned out really nice. Very cheap. We probably got about, I don't know, 15 bucks maybe in lures, 20 bucks in lures. And the clock thing was a seven. And then a piece of wood was out in the, out in the woods. So not too bad. Definitely under 30. Looks very nice. Um, I mean, stuff like this in the stores, it's very expensive. So it looks really good. Turned out really great. Fun little project for you to do and for any hunter fishermen out there. So have fun with it and have fun in the garage.